Hello, in this video I would like to talk about Automation Studio in Salesforce Marketing Cloud and how to create an automation in SFMC. So here you can see the scenario that we would like to recreate in the Automation Studio. This is kind of like a diagram that we are going to um, to recreate in the studio in the canvas. So what we would like to do is that we would like to find out some information about our customers. So Imagine that you might be receiving some uh, POS data about the orders that is going to be later stored in the orders data extension and you would like to um, uh, combine it with the customer's information that you have. In order to combine the information, you're going to use SQL or a no-code segmentation solution like Deselect in order to find out uh, what customers have made only one purchase more than a year ago in order to analyze it later in some other tools. But in order to do this, and uh, because this is a big piece of data and you would like to do this on a regular basis, let's say one per quarter, you would need to use an automation studio. So after that, we will need to uh, create a data extract activity. Then this data is going to go through the safe house and then uh, we are going to create a file transfer activity to connect with our FTP and then through the uh, SFTP we're going to receive a CSV and this is a illustration of a marketeer reporting or analyzing the data. Uh, as an FTP we're going to use FileZilla but it can be any other FTP provider as well. So now let's open Automation Studio and let's start with our scenario. So before actually opening uh, Automation Studio, I would like to show the source data extensions that we are going to use that can be reached through Email Studio. So we're going to use data extension customers that has those fields. I remember that this is just an example. The real uh, data extensions that you might be having can differ, of course. This is the information with the orders. So again, a lot of fields. Uh, we have also customer IDs so that we can create a relationship between those two data extension based on this field. So now we're going to open Automation Studio, which can be found here under Journey Builder. And then you are redirected to this overview screen. From here, you click on New Automation, but we actually created an automation in advance. So we're just going to click through it and then open the working canvas. From this canvas, uh, you have to choose your starting source. So since we would like to have our selection, uh, our automation to run uh, on every three months, every quarter, we choose schedule as a starting source. And then we select three months. You choose the time and ending never. You can uh, easily check the settings by clicking edit button. And here you can select uh, all those uh, settings basically and click on done. The first step that we're going to do is to actually drag and drop the SQL query and uh, create our SQL. So, so what we are doing is that we are selecting uh, two data extensions where we create an inner join based on the ID from the customer's DE and customer ID from the order's DE. Then we create a subquery we are using to find only those customers who have made one purchase only. And then we also filter on a date. We're looking for those uh, customers who have made a purchase one year uh, from now or more than one year. And then click on next. Then we need to find our target data uh, extension where we're going to save our um, query. This has to be done in advance and finish. Then we're choosing the data extract. So in order to make it uh, simple, I recommend it to create the same recognizable name for as for your automation as for your data extract activity. So choose the name for it, the file name or name in pattern. So this will be the file where everything is going to be saved. We're creating a CSV file and then the DE customer key. Uh, this has to be the same as external key for your target data extension basically. So you can just copy paste this name and press save. And then we choose the uh, file transfer activity and create a file transfer activity here. Just going to uh, quickly show how it looks like. So 
again create a recognizable name then we choose the file action move a file from safe house then we choose the file name and pattern again the same file and finish then we can press save and then run once for instance to check your activity uh, we have been doing quite a lot of tests so this was our activity it has been done successfully now I'm going to show you in FileZilla how we can extract the file this is a very important screen where you can find the information about the health of your automations how many of them were successful and, and uh, weren't successful I also recommend defined notification settings if uh, the automation was completed or if there was an error so choose the email that this information has to be sent to so now we have opened FileZilla here we have to define the host username password and choose the port and then quick connect this information can be found in the setup of your account uh, the host is with the URL that you will find on top the username is given the password is the same one that you define for your FTP on your uh, account and port also is given there. Here you can find all sorts of files. So in the folder import, you can find the, the file that we have just created and pushed here. So here it is, it's a CSV file, uh, the same file name and pattern as we have defined previously. So this is basically how you can create an automation in Automation Studio using the out-of-the-box solutions that um, Automation Studio offers. So now I'm going to show how to create the same automation but now without using any line of code by just using deselect segment, a no-code segmentation solution for Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So we're going to start off by opening deselect, which can be found here under App Exchange, and then you're redirected to this overview screen with all of your selections, and then press on New Selection. We're going to start off by giving a recognizable name for our new selection. It's going to be the same one as we have used all over uh, this example video which is one purchase customers and here from the available data extensions we're going to find data extension customers drag and drop it to the right here we can create an alias for a data extension but we're just going to leave it as it is now let's find data extension orders and drag and drop it on top of customers Again, we're just going to save it. And now we can define relationship between those two data extensions. So we're going to choose customer ID for orders and ID for customers. And we're going to uh, match customers with matching orders. So basically an inner join. And now we can define our filters. So from the orders data extension, we're going to drag and drop field customer ID to the right and here click on in results filter now we need to select another data extension which is customers and id here and press on this funnel button now from the customers de we're going to drag and drop id to the right and press on this function button and press count so we're going to count the number id existing customers and we want it to be one so we want to find only uh, only those customers who have made only one order and press save now we're going to filter on the order date we're going to choose is uh, before or on relative before today and one years we're going to find those customers who have made one purchase uh, one year ago or more than one year ago. Then we're going to move on to the next step, target definition. So you can see you're going to create a data extension and uh, create a segment from it already in one place. So you don't need to um, go to different studios in order to create the selection or your segment. You can all do this in one app.
So we're going to create a DE here on the fly. We're going to give it the same name as for our selection. We're going to choose that it is sendable or testable. It's not needed for this example. We can choose a data retention policy and press save. Here from our source data extensions, we can create a filter field. Here from our source DE, we're going to drag and drop fields to our target DE. We're going to choose ID from customers, first name from customers and email too, and press save. And now we can move on to our last step to run preview. So the preview will actually show us the, uh, the preview of our selection, the first 20 results of our final selection. If we're not satisfied with the results, we can always go back and do the necessary editing to our selection. If it's all good to go, we can press run and the selection will run inside Salesforce Marketing Cloud and our target data extension will be populated with the results. What is also happening in the background is that the SQL query activity is being created and then afterwards you can choose this result in SQL query activity to use for your automation in Automation Studio. So now our selection has run the preview. We can see the results. We can see that it, we have 81 records in total with ID, first name and email. Uh, and that is basically it. We're satisfied with the results. So that's it, how you can create an automation and automation studio using out of the box. Salesforce Marketing Cloud Solutions and also a no-code segmentation solution deselect segment. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this. Also subscribe to our newsletter and you never miss out on SFMC best practices and deselect updates. Thank you for watching again and bye.